Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, we've been playing around with neural networks a little bit. And in particular, we got to play with pins, right? One of the most exciting and, and novel applications of machine learning to dynamical systems and partial differential equations. I would like to continue this exploration of neural networks and dynamics, but take that in a, a slightly different direction by focusing now on what are called autoencoder neural networks. Now, just like I did with pins and just the basics of neural networks, I am going to start this section, this chapter of the book, with a theoretical discussion of the mathematics that underpins all of the machine learning that we are going to uh, be using. Now, don't skip this video. You need this video to understand what's going to come next. I regret to inform you there's no neural networks yet, but the next video and all of the ones after that, I promise there will be neural networks in. Now what I would like to talk about today is what are called uh, topological conjugacies. Now topological conjugacies are one of my all-time favorite theoretical math concepts. Right? They go back to one of my earliest interests in mathematics, which was topology. Right? So I got some exciting uh, stuff to talk about that's related to very theoretical, pure mathematical topology, but we're going to take all of this, these theoretical ideas and lift them into the machine learning, the applied realm. Now, what is the basic concept behind a, uh, a topological conjugacy? Let me give you a really kind of simple idea. Okay? All right. So let's imagine we have, uh, let's say we have the Earth, and let's say we have the Sun. And if we think about the old Ptolemaic idea, the old Ptolemaic idea was that uh, the, the Sun revolved around the Earth, right? So, uh, you know, something now we know is not true, but one thing that happens here is if you start looking at the motion of the other planets in this perspective frame, right? So if, if you even if you don't think that the Earth is the center of the solar system, if you use that coordinate frame, right, if you think of Earth being the fixed object and everything else moving relative to it, you would see the sun sort of moving around it. That's how it would sort of feel. But then start looking at other uh, objects in the, the celestial sky. So, for example, what about uh, the movement of Mars? So Mars would be... This is not to scale, obviously, right? But what would the motion of Mars be? Well, we know that just like Earth, Mars is orbiting the sun. But in the coordinate frame where the Earth is fixed, this thing creates an epicyclic quasi-periodic motion, right? Very, very, very complicated motion uh, that would be difficult to track, at, to say the least, okay? However, if you do things the right way, and by, by what I mean by do things the right way here, I mean put the sun at the center instead, then the Earth just goes around, right, in an elliptic orbit. Actually, that's a pretty good circle that I drew there, but it should be more elliptic. And Mars does the same thing, right? In fact, every other planet does the same thing as well. They're all just elliptic orbits. So what is it that I'm trying to say here? Perspective matters, right? Coordinate frames matter when it comes to dynamical systems. If you put the Earth at the center of things and think about everything moving relative to the Earth, motion becomes very complicated because that is sort of inherently not the right coordinate frame to put things in. Alternatively, if you just change your perspective to having the sun in the center, everybody's motion is nice and easy to predict, right? These things go back to, to some of the greatest uh, minds of the 1600s, right? Newton and, and Kepler and all of these amazing physicists and mathematicians. Okay, so how do we quantify this idea mathematically? Well, this, this idea is exactly what a topological conjugacy is trying to identify. So for example, imagine I've got a space, I'll just call it x, and I have a mapping back to that space by a function f, okay? So this could be my dynamical system, right? This could be the right-hand side of my dynamical system. 
Then imagine I've got another space, y, that is mapped back to itself by, the, by another function, uh, g. Okay, so, so for example, x could be the coordinate frame with the earth in the center, y could be the coordinate frame with the sun in the center, f and g could be the time dynamics of how these things are moving, then we would say that f and g are topologically equivalent. They're topologically conjugate. If there exists an invertible function h, which maps us back and forth, between these coordinate frames, right? So just changing perspectives, but also so that if I go from the top left to the bottom right, it is the same traversing both of these sort of ladders or these rungs, if you will. So for example, if I went F first, then H, so H of F, that is going across and down, that is the same as going H first, and g second. Or because h is invertible, this is the same as going like this. And what does that mean? It says if I want to go from the top left to the top right, that's the same as going down, over, and up, right? So again, these mean that f and g are basically doing the same thing. Again, topology is, is the study of open sets, and, and by a proxy of that, it is the study of uh, continuity and properties of functions, right? And essentially, this is telling us that f and g are basically the same function. They could be acting on different spaces altogether, right, different coordinate frames, but they are doing the exact same thing. And that's what this perspective is telling us here, right? Even though it's different coordinate frames, the motion is exactly the same. It just depends on how you look at it. So the question is, um, how can this help us in dynamical systems? Well, for example, as I said, if I have a dynamical system governed by F, and I have a dynamical system sorry, dynamical system governed by G, then if these two things are topologically conjugate, that tells me that everything that happens in F happens in G. Similarly, everything that happens in G happens in X, right? So if, why is that? Let's use a different color to denote this. Well, if I have an orbit, X0, x1, x2, x3, then if I apply my conjugacy to it, I get h of x0, h of x1, right? So all I'm doing is just changing the coordinate frame individually to each element of the orbit. But now let's play a little game, okay? So h of x1, well, that is the same as x1 is f of x0, right? So then this becomes f of x0. But by definition, h of f, this is the same as g of h of x0. So what does this actually mean? That this orbit of the dynamical system under f is transformed to an orbit of the dynamical system under G by applying this conjugacy. Because if I want to go from here to here, I just apply G. If I want to go from here to here, I apply G as well. If I want to go from here to here, I apply F, right? And so what that tells us is that trajectories, orbits of dynamical systems lie in one-to-one -one correspondence. If you like logic, this defines an equivalence class of dynamical systems, right? Because you have an equivalency of trajectories or of orbits up to conjugacy. This is saying that you're watching the same thing happen in F as, you're hap as is happening in G, but you just need to know how to look at it. You just need to know that the sun goes in the center to get everything on an epicyclic motion. So, this also tells us that F and G share all of the same characteristics. If F is chaotic, G is chaotic. 
If F falls into a periodic orbit, G falls into a periodic orbit. If G only has three periodic uh, solutions, F only has three periodic solutions. The advantage here from a dynamical systems perspective is hopefully one of these is easy to analyze. So for example, if G is really easy to analyze, I could do all my work on G and just lift it back to F, right? That is the advantage of a topological conjugacy. That's why I think that they are one of the greatest things in all of dynamical systems. And let me show you an example, okay? Here's the classic example, you know, after your, your dynamical systems book teaches you topological conjugacies, it usually has this example. Here's my example. Xn plus one is gonna be the tent map. So if you watch my dynamical systems lectures, you probably are familiar with this mapping. And in, in this case, uh, Xn is between zero and one. So that's my big X space. And I'm also going to use the logistic mapping, one of my other favorite dynamical systems. Right. And in this case, polynomial quadratic mapping. In this case, this is uh, piecewise linear, right? It's a, it looks like a tent if you draw it, put it in a Desmos or something. And similarly, I am in zero to one. Okay, so my X and Y spaces are the same, but the action on the spaces is different, right? These things are transformed back into themselves through completely different operations. Or are they? Right? Well, this is a discussion of topological conjugacies. Clearly, I'm going to show you some topological conjugacies between these systems. In particular, I'm going to leave this as an exercise for the viewer, right? Classic mathematics uh, textbook thing to say, right? I'm going to leave a hard problem for, the, for the, uh, the, the reader or the viewer or whoever they are that's here with me. But in this case, I'm going to write this for you. You can check h of x equal to, now here's a, here's a fun function, sine squared of pi x over 2 for x in 0, 1 is a topological conjugacy between these functions. And by that I mean it satisfies this relationship right here. Okay. Now you can easily check that this function takes 0, 1 and maps itself into, back into zero one. It is a one to one and odd two function. It is continuous, it has continuous inverse. All of that is good. So you have the back and forth I'll give you for free, but you gotta check this yourself to check it out. But now let's take a look at what this can tell us, right? Well, the tent map piecewise linear, okay? So, okay, this thing's quadratic. It's not that much harder to analyze. But for now, you know, piecewise linear is even better for me. So for example, I could look at the fixed points. Fixed points, right? These are points that are mapped back into themselves by these mappings. Uh, that would be in X, that would be zero, and I believe it's two thirds. So two fixed points for this mapping. If I put zero in here, I get zero back. If I put two thirds in here, I get one minus two thirds, which is one third multiplied by two, that's two thirds, I get it back. Two fixed points, right? But the orbit equivalency tells me every fixed point of one function is mapped to a fixed point of the other function. So for example, if you apply the function h to these things, then y is equal to h of zero, and h of two thirds are fixed points of the function of the, the logistic map, which in this case are going to be zero and three quarters. You can go ahead and check; those are both fixed points of uh, of my logistic map. Right? It's again, it's a very very simple little um, application here. So you can keep doing this game, right? I could find the cyclic. Points. I could find period two orbits, I could find period 10 orbits, and all of these things, all of the interesting information about one map is transferred to the other map. Uh, in particular, if you're coming at this from very theoretical dynamical systems, properties like the entropy are preserved by uh, the topological conjugacy. Or if you're familiar with De Devaney's definition of chaos, again, I have a whole lecture on the definition of chaos. Every single property of the definition of chaos is transferred over via these topological conjugacies. 
Let me throw one more at you, okay? Because remember, I said if you put your logician hat on here for a second, this gives you a, an equivalence class of functions. There's actually another function that is topologically equivalent here. Now, I just need to make sure that I get it right. I believe it's sine of, yes, sine of pi zn. And in this case, zn could be either minus 1 to 0, sorry, or 0 to 1. Ah, sorry, you can't see that, or 0 to 1. Okay, turns out this map is topologically equivalent to this map, which by transitivity means it's topologically equivalent to this map. So these, the tent map, the logistic map, and this sort of sign hump are all topologically equivalent. They all belong to the same class. They are all exactly the same dynamical system. In fact, this is related to some of Feigenbaum's work, if you're familiar with that name, with the Feigenbaum constant. Um, these are all maps that sort of lead to period doubling uh, into chaos, but they're all one-humped mappings, okay? But here's the, the interesting piece. You can prove that these things are topologically conjugate, but I do not have the explicit topological conjugacy that goes with this. And this is where we're going to come back in the next lecture because we're going to use machine learning to figure out what these conjugacies are. Because it, again, sign, you know, solving this, this equation, finding, say, fixed points, is a pain in the butt. That is a genuinely annoying thing to do, right? And in particular, finding things like period 2 or period 10 orbits of this thing is difficult takes a lot of work and frankly I mean it's something we can only do with a computer you can only approximate the solutions to these the tent map is easy I can do the tent map all day I can do this by hand I could probably find you the period 10 orbits in fact I can actually write down what every periodic orbit of this thing looks like I'm gonna again leave that as an exercise for you because it's a very fun thing to do but that means if I can find all of the periodic orbits in this guy find the conjugacy I can map them over to this okay and so I'm just going to wrap this up by saying conjugacies are everywhere in dynamical systems. And we're going to see a whole bunch of examples as we go through the next few video lectures. We're going to start with the simple example of these sort of chaotic maps. But we're going to look at things like, like normal forms. We're going to look at the Koopman operator inspired by uh, these sort of conjugacies. Um, and we're going to look at bifurcations as well, okay? The Hartman-Grobman theorem, uh, local and global linearization problems, right? All of these things are just coordinate transformations, and coordinate transformations are just topological conjugacies. So I hope that's piqued your interest. I look forward to telling you all about this in the next video. So I'll see you all then.